This One Degree Outside video is brought to you by the Topsfield Fair. At the Topsfield Fair, fun is around every corner. Experience the thrills, flavors, and entertainment you won't forget. From award-winning bites to exciting live shows, prize-winning fun awaits you at the Topsfield Fair, October 3rd to the 13th. Insights video, Matt Noyce, One Degree Outside Weather Network. Lots in this video. The coastal storm that's coming up for late this weekend to early next week. If you love meteorology and you love the science behind the forecast, this is your video anywhere in the Northeast. Uh, if you don't, <laughs> move on to one of our other ones that we give it to you a little bit quicker and easier. All right, we're talking about a setup for the upcoming coastal storm. We're going to dive into that. How the frost and freeze Thursday night is setting the stage for that. The weekend forecast overview, which is not a lost weekend, by the way. And a coastal storm, wind and rain and wave details on top of that. I'm sure that in the next couple of days, we'll be doing one of our live streams for pre-storm live streams for the inside track members and above. But if you'd like to support our mission, we thank each and every one of you who do membership.1degreeoutside.com. All right, let's start out with the jet stream winds. We'll color in the fastest wind. Two areas to watch. We've got a disturbance coming out of Missouri that'll be dropping down into a trough across the southeastern United States. A dip in the jet stream. That's the first area to watch. Second one, disturbance coming through central Canada. That gets carried by the jet stream to the south and east and eventually they interact, and that's what leads to the coastal storm development. It's interesting because when you look at the water vapor imagery, where yellow would be drier air, the blues and whites indicate the more moist air, you don't see a whole lot. I tell you, there's a disturbance coming out of Missouri to the Tennessee River Valley. It's chock full of dry air. Here's the one that's coming through central Canada. All right, a little bit more evident here, right? But still not a lot that's impressive. But remember, we've been in a dry flow. The moisture's not there yet. It will be as these disturbances start to pick up some of the moisture out of the Gulf and off the ocean. So if you look at the energy aloft, where the yellows and reds indicate atmospheric energy, energy pretty good amount of it over uh, west central Canada. Also, when you come down to the southeast, now watch what happens over time in the next few days, right? The one off the southeast begins to grab moisture and continues to be tropically infused energy. Here is the cold Canadian energy. There is the merger as we head into Sunday evening, Sunday night, and Monday, and eventually they just come together into one big storm and then start to shift east as we get through the beginning portion of the week. You say, does any of this have to do with Tropical Storm Jerry, which is out in the Atlantic? No. Jerry stays its own separate entity. Uh, you can see it comes and passes southeast of Bermuda Sunday night into Monday and then curls back off to the east. Jerry may add a little bit of extra swell into the picture, but we're going to have plenty of waves anyway just out of our coastal creatures. So Jerry is not directly involved with this, but let's see what is. Actually, the high pressure and fair weather with the cold air that's over the northeast now that is a player in this because as high pressure drifts overhead and carries that chunk of cool, it sets up a contrast. So you start to develop the moisture flow that comes off the southeastern coastline tomorrow. But look at the difference in high temperatures from 70s and 80s when you get across the southern United States to 50s when you get across the northeast. That kind of a temperature clash is definitely a player in the development of the storm. And here it is beginning to ramp up as we get through the day Saturday, not into New England yet, much of the Northeast, not dealing with it yet Sunday. Uh, the worst lashing of the storm definitely comes to the mid-Atlantic. It'll be a coastal flood event. We'll talk more about that in a minute. When you get into New England, it's gonna matter how far north you are because you may be a little bit more removed from it the farther north you go. Look, before I dive into more of the coastal storm details, I, it's worth mentioning that we are now at peak or past peak in some of the North country of New England. When you get into central and southern New England, having this rain and windstorm coming up Sunday night into the holiday on Monday, it's going to rip some of the leaves off the trees, quite a few of them most likely. So this is going to be a very short peak that happens in some areas of New England because of the way the drought has had an impact. And now you're going to get uh, the storm that comes in as well. Topsfield Fair, great partners of ours, and we're really appreciative of that. Please make sure if you want to get out to the fair that you do that. And particularly, we think Friday and Saturday, great days. Sunday's not bad. We're going to be there on Sunday. Uh, they asked if I would judge the Mrs. Essex County pageant. And my wife, Danielle, said yes. So, so I'll be able to do that. But nonetheless, the rain does arrive even into Topsfield the way it looks now on Sunday afternoon evening. If you want to get tickets for the fair, by the way, um, you can do it right through our app, the hourly page, the 14-day page. Just tap on the banner and you can purchase the tickets that way. Okay, let's get into the setup with this coastal storm and more of the details. So first of all, for our Thursday night, everybody in blue looks like a freeze, not a frost, but a freeze. Uh, and that is for a lot of folks deep into southern New England. It gets cold on Thursday night and Friday. You don't get much beyond about 60 or 62. At least the weather is quiet and fair, right? Friday night, we actually will probably frost in some spots of central New England and freeze in some spots of the north. Generally, not as cold on Friday night. 
Saturday, temperatures up into the 60s. Good day. Variable clouds on Saturday. It's not going to be beautifully sunny the entire time, but not bad. And then the clouds fill in Saturday night. Again, I think Sunday for most of us probably starts out dry. And then we find things turning wetter as we get deeper into Sunday, particularly in the afternoon and evening. And of course, that would keep temperatures down as the wind freshens out of the northeast and east. So the setup for us is to get the high pressure to drift off the coastline. Then you start to see the door open to get the moisture to come streaming up the coast. Here is that low pressure center again, lashing the mid-Atlantic during the day on Sunday, arriving the second half of Sunday to southern New England, and probably not until Sunday night in northern New England. So if you are going to be doing uh, some enjoyment of the leaves across northern New England. You've got Saturday and Sunday, I would say, and then Monday, the showers are in across the north and the rain continues in southern New England. One of the things Danielle mentioned yesterday in Insights that we had been looking at together behind the scenes is whether or not this thing is going to be tropical by nature. So there are definitely still signals it will have a warm core, which means warmth at the center, which would be somewhat tropical and even symmetric, perhaps, which means kind of evenly distributed warmth around the core of the system. So the reason that that becomes more interesting is because it could be a subtropical storm, a semi-tropical system that would get a name from the National Hurricane Center. It's worth noting that when the storm first starts to develop, there are some signals of the wind trying to be confined near the center, but that as we go farther out in time, that wind field becomes more kind of distributed, uh, more spread out. It starts to separate from the center a bit. And if it does that, that's not necessarily tropical. So that's why we're looking at this going, it may end up being a subtropical system where it would get a name, but not be fully tropical in nature. In terms of top wind gusts, it's early to get specific on that, but we can tell you that the estimate anyway is somewhere around 50 miles per hour for a good portion of southern New England near the coastline. Now, notice when you get down to Long Island, some of the red there, that would be over 60, and that is a possibility, just so you know. If the storm comes a little farther north, you'd find those top gusts tickling 60 or 65, particularly right at the immediate coast. So you can imagine that's going to stir up the waves, right? In fact, if I play things through on a big picture of waves, there are the waves from 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 Jerry that I told you by early next week could come into play, but we're going to generate our own waves anyway with the coastal system. Notice just off the coast of Jersey, 20 foot waves by Sunday evening. They are building in New England and continue to do so Sunday night and Monday. So this is a big impact on the marine community. It certainly does qualify as a dangerous storm for mariners. Not anything to worry about Friday and Saturday with one to two foot waves here at home. By the time we get to Sunday, though, that's when we start to see the waves building on the north side of the system. And then particularly Sunday night and Monday, we begin to hit 15, 16 foot waves, 17 foot waves out by Georgia's bank. And we're probably six to 10 feet right at the coast. There is an astronomically high tide, which does introduce the likelihood of coastal flooding, particularly for the coastline of southern New England but perhaps again for the coast of Maine because of the combination of wave action. As some of that, just how bad it is, just how far north, will depend on how far north the wind field goes, which we looked at together. It's gonna to depend a little bit on the storm track. Meanwhile, in terms of rain, we could use whatever we can get for the water table. It's going to be a lot of rain in spots. I think what's gonna be interesting here is, for example, as we play things through, you can see, what is it, two or three inches of rain? Could there be more in spots? Yes, but notice also some real strong signals of drier air trying to punch in on the north side. Remember, we're setting the stage for this with dry, cold Canadian air, which means there's going to be some spot where not much rain makes it in. And that might be some of the worst drought areas across northern New England. So we're not promising a real good drought busting rain in the north. Not yet. We'll see where some of these frontal boundaries get set up and how that has an impact. Meanwhile, we are streaming now all the time. We've got our weather network, New England's first and only weather network. And you can find it at both OneDegreeOutside.live or on your smart TV. Open up that YouTube app and do a search for One Degree Outside Network, and you'll see it, be able to watch it on TV. And yeah, we'll be doing some live streaming on this one as we get, I'm sure, into the early part of next week with this thing. That's the way it looks for now. We will keep you posted always at OneDegreeOutside.com. And the best uh, resource you have is our app. You can get all this there, the stream, you can get everything there on the One Degree Outside app. Five stars, totally free, waiting for you in the App Store and on Google Play. I hope you've enjoyed this and it qualified as the deep dive that you love. (laughs) We'll see you again later on. Thank you.